Hi, I'm Jason from the Creative Collective. I've teamed up with the guys from AV3 to give an insight into how I use bias effects within my Avid Media Composer editing system. Before we start, I'd like to say thank you to Chris Davies from Eastwood Media. Thank you so much for your content. I'd also like to say thank you to the guys from AV3 for giving me this opportunity to actually share how I work, my workflows, and how I use Boris within Avid. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Boris, but more importantly, I'm also a huge fan of AV3. If you go to the website, you can see loads of blogs, tutorials, forums. They've always got discounts on software, which really helps the indie guy like me. So it's worth checking them out uh, regularly as well. Okay, so what we're gonna have a look at now are two sequences. The first sequence has my very basic Avid color correction on it. The second sequence is the same sequence with the same correction, but obviously the Boris effects are added on top. And then I'll take you through how I did it. Okay, so as you can see, this is the timeline for the sequence I've just shown you. I thought for the first episode, we'd just uh, go through the two effects I've used quite a few times to create different looks and feels. And they are the BCC Raise Streaky and the BCC Lens Flare Effect 3D. So if we go back to the first clip, uh, we'll get on with it. Okay, so we're back at the beginning of our sequence. I'm gonna jump straight to the second clip where I have my first BCC effect inserted. If I just open up my effects editor, and you can see what we have running. We have a BCC lens flare 3D, and we have a BCC rays streaky. So if I bypass the lens flare to start, and we just bypass the rays streaky to start, you can see what the content actually looks like. It's quite a gray day. Uh, trees are looking a bit washed out. If I bring a little bit further forward, trees are on browns a little bit washing into the greens. This uh, path doesn't look particularly brown. It's got a bit of white in it. It's not particularly gray. I was trying to get more of a look of early morning spring bike ride, light coming through the trees, really nice kind of warm effect. So I started off by dropping the BCC rays effect on. Uh, the reason why it was, I chose the rays streaky is because I needed a streaky light to be broken up through the trees, which is what I feel this created, like light hitting the trees, the trees breaking up the light, that broken light effect. Um, what we'll do is I'll quickly show you a few of my, fav my favorite features and then I'll show you how, how I manipulated to get this kind of feel that I used. Uh, one of the things I really like about the new BCC is the fact you have the show effects browser. You can see any presets in that effect in real time, which I find really useful. I, like, I love the fact you can move the compare bar across, let me move it onto that, the compare bar across, or you can have the side by side compare really powerful and quite creative if you're lacking a bit of the old creative juices at times. So once you find what you want, you hit cancel, sorry, you hit apply, and then that will drop the effect onto your clip for you. Um, while we're here, I just wanna show you this, if what I did in Mocha to manipulate this effect. If I increase the light intensity, you will see that there's a mask, you can probably notice now, there's a mask around the tree, around the bike, and around this tree here. I basically created a Mocha mask uh, the reason why I did that is I wanted to create a, a feeling of depth. And if you were the person watching the guy coming down this path, you wouldn't particularly see the rays passing on this side of the tree or that side of that tree. The reason why I included the rider in that is because I wanted him to pop out the frame. Another little cool trick in Avid is if you have a slider highlighted like this one is now, you can actually type in a number. So if you wanted to see 200, you just type it in instead of dragging the slider up and down the scale. So my original setting for that was uh, 93.8. And there we go. Um, 
if we go down to Mocha, I want to just show you how powerful Mocha is when you attach it to the streaky rays and the stuff you can do. Um, so if we go to launch, okay, so what we're looking at now is the Mocha interface. If I just quickly turn all this off and go through it one by one, as you can see, I have four tracks happening. I have a tree back, I have a tree front, it's actually a bike, I apologize. And I have the tree front track going on as well. And then I have my flare track, which I'm using in my camera, sorry, in my uh, lens flare effect for later on. And you can see it's that area there. What I'll do is I'll give you a quick run through how Mocha works. What I'll do is I will delete my track on the front tree, which is this one, and I will recreate it for you. First thing with Mocha is to set your track up, make sure the object you're tracking is the, in the fullest point in the whole frame. So for me, if I started there, there's obviously less information. So, but if I start at the front, that's when the, the object, the tree is the biggest. So I'm just gonna delete that track. And I'll make a new one. So best way is to, well, the only way I know is to create an X spline around the tree. Don't have to be su super critical. Uh, my understanding of Mocha, it is a planar tracker, um, which means it tracks texture and surfaces, not um, what's the word I'm looking for? Contrast. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm incorrect. So that's my that's my bounding box, if that's the correct word for it. That's my track area. I'm going to track. I'm just going to quickly tidy up a few little bits. As you can see, it zooms in on the pixels you've cut, you've you've chosen. I hit track, which is a front go. That will now track as my rider comes past the tree. It's giving a good clean track. It's losing a little bit there. It's gonna stop it, have a little bit of a fix up. As you can see, as soon as you stop it, it creates a keyframe, which is the little flag-like structure that pops up. And then I can carry on tracking by hitting forward again. And that looks really good. I just tidy up the one on the back. And then I could always track backwards. That's play backwards and that's track backwards one frame at a time. Just gonna pull that red, that one in there a little tad. Keep tracking backwards. Really good, right? Really happy with that. It's gonna turn on all these. Turn that. F uh, I apologise. I'm going to label that. I've obviously forgotten how to spell front. Okay, so I'll turn off the flare track for now because I don't need it in this part of my clip. And I'm going to close that down. Don't save it because this will push the data straight onto my, um, into my preset anyway. Unless of course you're saving this track for later. So what's happened is it's pushed all the data across and the mask has been updated on the trees, the bike, and obviously my flare, which I turned off the eye in the process. It hasn't been pushed across because I don't need it in this preset. If I show you the the mat quickly, that is the mat, and I can obviously turn the feathering down. Mm -mm -mm. So as we jump across, you can see the track. I have a very soft feathering in place because I wanted to give the feeling the light was wrapping around the tree, not a hard edged effect. So if I just put it there and I open the, go back to viewing it. As you can see, this is the effect I've got. The tree is untouched, the side of the tree is untouched, the rider is untouched, and he jumps up the frame quite nicely. Okay, let's carry on to where we're looking at now. Okay, just a few more th um, things that I adjusted on the BCC Ray Streaky. I, I used the detailed rays, not the fat rays. The detailed rays, because it gave me that more broken up look of light coming through the trees. My look was extended. I preferred that to the others. This is obviously a personal thing. You just got to go through, find the look you're going for. Colorize, I ch chose colorize because I added color to the mix. And along with a soft light, I thought was the best lighting effect, the light um, effect that was coming through the trees for it. Let's quickly jump onto the lens flare effect. The lens flare is a great effect. One thing that threw me when I first opened it was the fact that I couldn't find any tracking data which sort of confused me for a while. Until of course I found the ability to actually import tracking data. And now you can see why we did the flare track earlier on. So basically what I did was I went to BCC Ray Streaky, 
down to launch mocha again. Excuse me, I'll just keep going with that. I literally oh, selected that uh, my flat track, which has been done, and I chose to export my track. And this is a center point track, not a corner pin track, it's a center point. And I save that onto my desktop. That's now saved to my desktop. Close this, don't save. Go back to my lens flare 3D. Down to import track data. And I loaded from my desktop my lens flare three, that one there. And that gave me my tracking data of the track, which starts right there. Now, a little thing I can show you is if you go to show motion path, you will see the motion path, which is up in the corner of the frame, which is where I tracked of the, that the lens flare was going to follow. A few other features, let me just turn that show motion path and click it, click it off. That's gone for now. A few other nice features on the lens flare is that it is so customizable. If I just quickly jump up to presets, you can pick any of these presets and it saves the data from the track as well, which is really, really useful if you're just trying to get a look and you're not sure what look to go for. So as we come down, uh, all the controls are pretty self-explanatory. You can add more flares, you can add more rings, there's some really great tutorials on length flares on BC, on, the, on the BorisFX.com website. Some really good in-depth tutorials on, but this is just how I used it. So my ended up effect is the effect that you saw with a guy coming around on the bike, uh, the flare following him. As you'll notice on the flare, there are two key points that I've put in. These two here, and these are on the global intensity. The reason being is when he was up here, I didn't want any of that lens flare affecting him or even coming past the tree. So I've turned the global intensity down, and as soon as it gets to this point, the global intensity is at its peak. So it basically fades up to the end of the clip. So if I just shut this down for a second, close that to there. Okay, so now we have a basic understanding of how I've applied those effects to my sequence. You can see if you scan along, I've used the same effects a few times, just literally dragging them into the, uh, the clip and effect I'm tweaking them for the effect I'm trying to do. One thing I forgot to show you was how to adjust the position or the source of the streaky rays. If you can make sure this, these widget controls, so the top one, and then I zoomed out of my image. As you can see, I there have my light source control point. You also have the widgets for ray length and intensity. Uh, but I generally stick to the controls. As I said earlier on, you can click on them, you can type in a number, and it works. And I find it easier to control than moving the little widgets or sliding along a bar. I literally just type in a number normally. And that's how I work. Um, so yes, I've used this effect through a lot of the clips in the sequence. I find that it kept the color palette the same, which was really important for the look for me that I was trying to create. And it also sort of keeps the whole thing, my workflow working really fast. I hope this has been really useful and informative. In the next episode, we're going to look at how I created the glint effect on the bike with the masking I used, how I created this kind of, uh, there's another lens flare effect I created there, and this flashing light image is uh, coming through, which I was trying to create uh, towards the back end of the clip. Thank you very much, and I'll be back soon. Oh, 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 oh,